Hey guys, Stealth here, and welcome to the new trailer for Falling Frontier. This game was supposed to come out in 2023. It is now slated for 2025, and as the game is still very much being worked on, we're getting all sorts of nice new looks behind the scenes about what's going on. So let's have a look at this trailer together and see just how beautiful this game is coming along. I'm going to let this first bit run because it is just glorious to watch. Isn't that gorgeous? Falling Frontier, in case you haven't heard of the game, is a sci-fi RTS. This is uh, a genre that we don't really have that many games in. I mean, yeah, you got Stellaris, but it's more of a, a grand strategy for X title. There are other games that come to mind to some extent, but, well, nothing really like this. Of course, the part that you're looking at right now is a cinematic trailer, so that doesn't really do the whole gameplay a lot of justice. We've been fooled by cinematic trailers before. So, the cinematic trailer is nice, um, but thankfully there's also a bit of gameplay. Before we look at that though, um, as I mentioned, the game is very much being worked on. The game has a couple of features which are interesting, such as that Intel and Logistics are keys to victory. So, whereas normally you might not pay that much attention to your logistics, I mean, yeah, sure, you get a logistics unit to resupply your ships, your fleet, your tanks, whatever you have, and you keep going. In this game, it's going to be a little bit more intricate. It also happens to be a procedurally generated star system. So, ideally, this single-player game is going to offer a ton of replayability, as every time the star system, so your arena of battle, is going to be very different. The game features a ton of customization for your ships, your fleet. Um, it has the ability to raid enemy supply lines, again, messing with logistics. You can deploy minefields, construct recon stations, ambushes, using asteroid fields, nebula, whatever you can find. Now, let's have a look at some more of the gameplay. This part is a resupply bit. There is a tender, or a cargo ship, or whatever you want to call it, that is dropping off supplies to a planet. These planets, from what I've gathered so far, are essentially your bases. They are where you gather your resources. They are potentially where you build your ships. This is a extremely detailed look at how you can resupply those things. Essentially, as a player, you basically say, I'm gonna drop off supplies. And then you get this beautiful cinematic, if and when you choose to zoom in well enough. The ship over on the bottom left hand side of the screen is the one that's dropping off the supplies. And you can see there are a couple of containers attached to the side of the ship. One of them being detached right now. There it goes. It's being detached by a couple of what seem to be worker drones. And there's another ship coming in from the planet that's currently trying to link up with that, uh, let's say, cargo container that's standing upright. Something that really strikes me here is just how detailed everything is. The ship that came up from the planet that's going to bring down the container didn't do so in a, I'm going to fly to this thing, grab it and go back. It did a sort of 
meetup, if you will, in space, much like you might do in something like Kerbal Space Program, where you very carefully do a rendezvous in space. And then, as you can see here, the thing seems to burn retrograde in order to slow down its orbit. It already tries to turn around in order to slow its descent. It's currently working that retrograde burn there, and now it's going to start to turn. And this is just the animation for resupplying a planet. It does have me a little worried because I've seen these beautiful animations before. And the real question is, do you get the time to admire the beauty? Do you get the time to smell the roses, as it were? Because you do have a lot to work on in a strategy game. And looking at some of these things, you might not really have time for that. On to the next bit then, where we're going to have a look at some customization options for the frigates that are in the game. There are, as far as I know, just a few ships at the moment, but I expect we'll be getting more of them. The beauty of this game is that you have so much customization for your ships. This allows you to really set up your ships in your playstyle. Like, do you want to have them spam missiles? Um, is that going to work against your enemy? Because if they happen to have, let's say, a lot of point defenses, then missiles might not be the way to go. You have all sorts of additional modules. Forward VLS is being selected. Um, and this is, by the way, a forward observer. It's going to be important later. You can swap your main weapons, as you can see here. Rail guns, cannons, main guns, missile launchers. Um, all of these things will, of course, make the ship more expensive. Because adding weapons means you're adding more points that require resources. Might also make the ship heavier, and that might deal with its maneuverability. All of these things will also probably work in tandem with the rest of the fleet. Like this forward observer can be used in order to do bombardment with another ship. Over here we have a picket frigate. This is the Coventry class. And the Coventry class comes with a bit more armament by the looks of it. Currently only equipping cannons. I don't know what any of these things do, really. I mean, yes, there's tooltips, but what the stats are, I don't know. It's just a trailer to show you what the game can do. So docking thrusters uh, allow it to dock with uh, orbital stations. You've got landing thrusters that you can see in a bit where the ship's able to land on planets. Ships have jump drives, which apparently can be increased or decreased depending on what you want the ship to be able to do. If you're building a ship in a local area and it's not supposed to leave that local area, it's just a patrol ship, you might not even need a jump drive. So maybe you can take that off. Right now they're installing additional SeaWiz or PDC point defense cannons anti-missile systems. The amount of customization here is beautiful. I don't know if there's going to be, let's say, a meta of ships that will do extremely well, but considering the fact that Falling Frontier is going to be a single-player game, I'm not really sure if a meta is that interesting. Sure enough, there might be loadouts that do better than others, but it is ultimately a single-player game. So if you have a way that you just like to equip your ships, that you think looks good or looks cool, then yeah, by all means. Now over here we have the Fastlane Stealth Frigate. Uh, this one is going to work, depending on the weapon loadout, in tandem with the Forward Observer that we've seen before. Over, yeah, just below that there. Cruise Missile Tubes, um, some of these work with a Forward Missile Observer, or sorry, with a Forward Observer. So this ship might be slightly further behind, and the Forward Observer spots and basically paints the target, and this thing flings the cruise missiles at it. Comes equipped potentially with rail guns, main guns, uh, missile systems, or arguably I might be able to use such a ship just as an artillery ship. So you have tons and tons and tons of options in that sense. Now keep in mind, you're just looking at one planet. So let's zoom out a little bit. Let's see how big the area really is. And oh boy, <laughs> here we go. Frozen this frame for a second. This is why I said that because it is operating on a grander scale, you might not have time to admire the little animations such as offloading the freighter. If you have this many planets, this many bases to uh, manage, as well as try to figure out what your next move is going to be, I'm not so sure if you'll actually have time to zoom in all the way and see a freighter unloading. This is something that I think is a bit of a waste. And I don't mean that in a bad way, like the dev shouldn't spend time on this. It's entirely his game. He can decide how he wants to fill his time, of course. 
It's just that we as players might have too many things to do to be actually able to look at the animations. Something else that is very important to mention, you're just looking at the system of Saturn right now. These moons are around Saturn. This is one area of the whole star sector. There is, or star system, there is um, a ton of other planets. I mean, there's what, eight or nine planets in our solar system. They're all going to have moons. They're all going to get fought over. This is the scale of this game. Considering the vast scale of things, you will need a way to get your ships to go from point A to point B. Um, ideally faster than something like taking two years. So that's why these ships have jump drives. And with that, you'll be able to do some sort of faster than light jump in order to get your ships to potentially show up at hostile planets or be able to defend your own planets. So let's have a look at one of those animations here. The ship seems to move into some sort of vortex and um, once it does, it is going to be away for a while. Depending on, of course, how far the ship is supposed to travel and maybe the capacities of the jump drive. Maybe there are some faster jump drives. So it's gone from this sector, or at least from uh, the seemingly orbit of uh, Tethys over there. And it is coming out here in a mining location. You can see there's an FTL jump incoming. It's the TDF York. And there she is. Coming out of hyperspace or whatever it is right now. She seems to be joining this mining ship. The mining ship might need some protection. Because as I mentioned, the ship or the game is about being able to also interrupt the enemy's logistics. And hunting down mining ships is a fair game. So in this case, this ship seems to be set up for a patrol route, keeping the mining ship safe. Again, the mining ship has its own animation. It's not just going um, right click asteroid and the ship's going to mine. Nope, there are all sorts of animations. The ship seems to fire some sort of projectile at this asteroid. There are a couple of bits from the asteroid just uh, getting clipped off of it because of the impact. And some mining drones are immediately zipping around trying to have a go at these precious resources. In the meanwhile, the ship on the patrol area is uh, patrolling, as you can see. It's not doing straight turns either. Notice that. It's another one of those minor details, but ships in space just don't turn like a car. They're going to take a little bit more time to turn around. And, well, that might also take more fuel. Again, this is only Saturn. <laughs> You're playing a strategy game like this on so many different levels. Something else that these guys are going to try and do is get a bit of intel on whatever is happening on the enemy's side, which is at least my interpretation of these exclamation marks. So it's time to have a look at the scanning mechanic, which will gather information for you, see if there's any ships, and see what you might need to send over there. There we go, there's the target. Um, it is going to have a burn time, and you can see that sometimes uh, the burn time is better or worse. There we go. Right-hand side says configuration. Uh, you can get more accuracy or more detection. So a bigger area is likely to get more detection, but less accuracy. So you might not exactly know what is out there, uh, or you might not be able to exactly target it, something to that effect. Again, part of this is just my interpretation. This is... It's all looking so good. I am very eager to play this game. And I'm also very um, happy that the dev is taking his time. I know that there are some who might be saying, oh yeah, Falling Frontier, it's basically vaporware, right? Because there's, there's still no game. After years, where's the game? We've seen so many times that games get rushed out the door and then just fall flat. There have been countless examples, and it's bad for the industry. It's bad for the game. It's bad for the dev. It's bad for us as players. So I'm very happy that this developer, uh, Star Fox Studios, is taking a lot of time to get it right, to make the game as good as it can be. Because as far as I know, it's a studio that's basically one guy. All of this, animations, fighting, ship design. As far as I know, it's done by one guy. So please keep that in mind. 
Now it looks like the Fitzroy over here has been successful in destroying or at least eliminating some other ships. And now it's going to do a bombardment. Look at that. I'm not sure what this planet did wrong. It might just be <laughs> on the wrong side of the teams. It is going to get uh, a serious wake up call as the Fitzroy bombards it with a spray of missiles just hitting all over the planet. And considering the serious amounts of damage that you can see there, uh, that's some hefty caliber missiles that they got there. So that's it Hannibal, for the trailer right now for Falling Frontier. Beric class frigate Sirtis and Coventry class frigate Caratha have been dispatched to assist. Rendezvous coordinates to follow in data packet. There we go. Now we got Mars going towards the asteroid belt. Um, we have Earth there. You got Venus, you can see. There's Mercury close to the sun, of course. All of these are going to have their own, their own area to fight in. Their own ships, their own navies. And you get to manage one side of it. Falling Frontier, coming at some point in 2025. Um, I can't wait, and yet I can wait, and I hope you will too. If you enjoyed what you saw so far, and are, for example, a fan of The Expanse, or maybe uh, Nebula's Fleet Command, Star Sector, this game is probably for you. So have a look down at the link in the description, wishlist the game, keep up with it, and once it's there, I will undoubtedly release another couple of videos on it because this is a game I will definitely feature on the channel. Hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what your thoughts are down below in the comments and I'll see you soon for more.